Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, and we're talking about why your dominant eye has no bearing in how you set up. What matters is how you get ready to perform a task. Now, you want to drive a ball in this direction, right? You don't want to drive a ball in that direction. That would not be a good idea. So let me get my trusty hammer here. Now, you're going to see a lot of different ways of um, addressing the ball on tour. You'll see some guys with the head back, some guys with the head not back. It all depends on what their, their classical teaching upbringing was. Uh, you'll see Lorena Ochoa start off with a nice level head and as, he gets, as she gets to the top of the swing, she'll have this huge tilt in her head on the way down. Same for Rory. And yet you'll see Jordan Spieth with a proper tilt at a dress and Jack Nicklaus with a turned head at a dress. And then on the way through, you'll see uh, more of a tilted head. And they thought that Jack had the you know, dominant eye thing and that's why they, he turned his head. Well, what they all have in common without a shred of a doubt is they're going that way. They're sending a ball to a very specific target over there. They're not worried about ball contact. If they're worried about ball contact, it's going to be a nasty day at the office. And that's why so many of you have issues with that. If I'm getting ready to hammer a nail straight down into this piece of wood here, this is what it would look like. If I'm getting ready to take a, a nail and drive it in that direction through the piece of wood, notice the difference. This is not a dominant eye issue. It's me organizing my anatomy to go that way. That's huge. So I would never set up like this to hammer a nail. Why would I do that? So that's why you'll see some people set up right over the ball. Then they let their head turn in the backswing. And then you'll notice in the downswing, they're behind the ball. They find a way to go that way. And that's what, that's what's so important about understanding how this machine works. So it's a great way to illustrate that, you know, for my students and for you guys is put a door frame in front of you, get ready to drive a ball through the base of a door frame. So if I got a ball at the bottom here, I'm going to put this in a different position. So you see it right there. So put an alignment rod in the ground and feel how you're going to deliver through the alignment rod. So you see how I'm braced against my door frame. I'm getting ready to squeeze the ball through the door frame with the weight of my hammer. So I gather the weight of the hammer and I deliver through the door frame. Notice how my head never moved. And this, because I am left eye dominant. If I were to do this left handed, you wouldn't see any difference. There used to be a difference because at, at the beginning I was so worried about the ball just like everyone else. But now I know this is where I need to go and that's going to organize my intersection down there in relation to that. So again, notice how I'm getting ready to squeeze a ball through the door frame. Notice my head. That has nothing to do with my dominant eye. It has everything to do with my task. So no matter, you know, so now you'll be able to watch the players on tour. You'll see how they go about performing their business of going in that direction. And there's one in particular, and this is a great little tip here that you'll appreciate. I had a nice breakthrough with one of my students. Um, I have many students that, I, I, I ha that have wandering eyes. You know, when you're thinking a lot, you tend to think with your eyes and what ends up inevitably happening is when you're worried about these ball, you know, these positions in the backswing, you tend to follow the club after you're done with the club, then you'll default to the ball. So you'll see that all the time. You'll walk up and down a driving range. You're going to see a lot of changing head positions in relation to what they're worried about. So you always know what somebody's worried about when you know how this sucker works, right? So, when you see somebody do that, they're worried about what position they're going into. They're, they're worried about making a mistake and it, it can become a little tedious to get rid of that. For many of my students, I'm able to get rid of that for, I'd say about 70% of them. And we have to find alternatives for the other 30%. And here's one that really worked out quite nicely. And when you come to my, my learning center, you'll notice that 
um, on our outdoor mats there, we, have, we, we stick pieces of tape down to perform, you know, we, we're, we're putting an intermediate point in front. So I'm going to use this T right here as my intermediate point. And I'm going to deliver a left edge of that to play my fade. I'm going to set up, ball four to center, club face not too closed. And I'm going to put my eyes on the intermediate point. And I see that I want to go left of that. So my eyes are there. And now, inevitably, I can't go into my backswing from here. My head is now in the wrong position. So I'm going to let my eyes go from there back to the ball. But what really is cool now is that the eyes don't go into the backswing. And that was a major breakthrough for Bobby, okay? So Bobby, I know you're going to really enjoy this video, man. I appreciate you being, you know, uh, uh, helping me become a better teacher. So my eyes are in front there. And that's where Bobby went on his own. He says, I'm going to put my eyes there and just see the ball go through there. It's because I want to go in that direction. So he starts off there. Then inevitably it comes back to the ball. But then he's going back through that intermediate point. It's kind of planting the seed for his mind so that he can go back in that direction. So we look, and I looked at his body language when he did that. It was phenomenal. He was right through the ball. He, he gained like at least a club in distance like that, stopped hitting the ground before the ball because the mind was now out there and swinging through that spot and into the picture. So. Eyes there. I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going there. And I went right away. I was able to adapt to this extremely easily, even for myself. And that brings me to a lot of the players that you'll see on tour. Observe um, Annika Sorenstam, a few of her videos, uh, Carl Peterson. And you'll see a few of the players who tend to, you'll see them. Actually, their eyes are down the line as the club is coming into impact. It hasn't even impacted the ball yet. David Duval was the same way. He was number one in the world. So what these players are doing is that no matter what, they're going out toward the target and they're not worried about ball contact. They're, they're letting their, their, their postures take care of that. So they're over here and it's like, wow, I just... And my eyes were already down the line and I saw this, this ball flash out in the direction I wanted to start the ball. So I'm basically looking left of my wet paint sign. I want to go left of wet paint, left of wet paint, left of wet paint. Man, that was right on the left edge of that wet paint sign. But what you won't see me do is this. You don't want the head to be moving forward on the downswing. So this is me worried about the ball. That's very different than me going toward the target. So you notice how I never got in front of the ball and I was able to deliver nicely in the direction I wanted to go. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? We keep getting deeper into that rabbit hole on our way to Wonderland. Hope you're enjoying the ride. We'll see you in the next video.